Plus. This year's primary election could be extended by a couple of months. There are so many people running in some races that campaigns are bracing for a runoff later this year. Our Capitol reporter Michael Highland is live in Raleigh with more on how this all works. Michael. Yeah, some experts I talked to say they think it's almost a guarantee that at least one of the high-profile races going on right now will go to a runoff. It's actually been more than a decade, though, since we've seen a statewide race go to a runoff in North Carolina. With voting underway in North Carolina, we still may not find out who the nominees are in some races the night of the primary on March 5th. Runoffs were made for elections like this one. Chris Cooper is an expert on state politics at Western Carolina University. Particularly on the Republican side, several races have drawn a large number of candidates this year. The 13th congressional district in the central part of the state has 14 Republicans running, and former President Donald Trump has not endorsed any of them. To avoid a runoff, a candidate has to win at least 30 percent plus one vote in the primary. It's up to the second place finisher to call for the runoff if they want it. And I would expect to see big money spent on get out the vote efforts. It's not going to be as much about persuasion as it's going to be about mobilization of people you already know are on your side. The lieutenant governor's race has 11 Republicans running compared to three Democrats. Political consultant David Capen recently pulled the race and found no one reaching 30 percent. Pretty much the top half of that field was all within the margin of error of one another. And so it really is going to be a wild card race of who those top two are. The last time there was a statewide runoff was in 2012. Turnout dropped dramatically with just over 200,000 people voting. A spokesman for the State Board of Elections says it costs about $17 million to have a statewide election. But the cost of a runoff would be lower because you don't need as many poll workers or early voting sites. Especially in these crowded fields, it's where it comes and helps to play nice during the first primary election so that you can mobilize voters who are maybe supporting other candidates, that those candidates are going to want to come and endorse you. Unaffiliated voters get to choose which primary they want to participate in, and if there is a runoff, they do have to continue participating in that same party's primary. If there is a runoff, it would be on May 14th. Cross and Angela. Well, Michael, we have seen Donald Trump endorse several candidates across the state, and he's ignored other races completely. If there's a last-minute endorsement, do you think that can make a difference? That is one of the questions that I asked. You know, he was still making endorsements even this week, endorsing State House Speaker Tim Moore in his congressional race. But some of the experts I talked to pointed out, you know, more than 200,000 people have already voted at this point, and that if he is going to make an endorsement to try to impact the outcome of any of these other races, as Chris Krupa put it, time's a-wasting. <laughs> Michael Hyland, always right on it. Thank you, my friend.